Hey guys, Tony here. I'm up at SeaWorld Resort in the Gold Coast to showcase the Cedia 2023 Tech Summit. This isn't like a standard consumer show where you get to see all of the nice big fancy stands. This is where all of the big players in the industry come together with all of the installers and the distributors to showcase the latest products and innovations. So over the next two days, I'll be making several videos covering off all of the latest products and innovations that are coming to the market. So make sure you stay tuned for that. In this video though, I'm gonna be showing the event and some of the things that are happening like the awards night tonight as well as some of the other things going on throughout the day so stay tuned so after flying in late with my son we got up early and made our way from the resort down to the conference room where i bumped into don mckenzie from cricks and then headed in via the wrong door of course and picked up our passes from paul skelton from cedia who did a fantastic job of getting the tech summit up and running once we did a couple of happy laps to check out the progress of the various setups i was fortunate enough to interview daryl friedman ceo of cedia as he'd made his way down to australia for this event and the award night it's a short interview, but as a home theatre enthusiast, I was interested to see how Cedia as an industry body translated what they do down to the consumer or enthusiast like me, and I was really impressed with how seriously Cedia takes the home cinema, audio and smart home industry, and how they're trying to elevate it as a properly recognised vocation. Let's take a listen. Is this your first time in Australia? And if so, what do you think of your time here so far? This is my first time coming to Australia and I've been looking forward to this trip since I started the job over a little over a year ago. I've had this date circled on my calendar because I, I've always wanted to come here. I knew about the, the integrator community here is so passionate and so competent. I wanted to learn from them about what they need from Cedia. So I've been having a great couple of days and uh, we had a great award ceremony, two days of tech summits and just lots of meetings to meet the integrators and find out how Cedia can best serve them. The big talking point of this event is RP22. How do you see RP22's impact on the industry over the next five years? Well, RP22 is a game changer for this industry. Of course, what it stands for is the recommended practice for immersive audio design and excellence in audio design. It's personal for me because I come from the music industry and you know, for 20 years in the music industry, we've had a problem that we could not solve and CD has actually solved this problem. This problem is how do you translate that artistic vision, the sound that the artist is trying to make into the end user and the consumer and how they hear what the artist's intent is. And uh, it's always been a challenge for the music industry. And through this new recommended practice, we think we've solved it. CD is now coming up with a practice that can make sure that the consumer hears the music exactly as the artist intended it, or the sound as the director intended as a, of a film or gaming in any sense of that. So it's a big, it's a big initiative for us. It's took volunteers three years to really come up with this. And we're so proud of the end result. We think it's gonna be a game changer for the industry and for consumers. What are some of the important issues that Cedia has in its site at the moment? Well, Cedia is about advocacy, connection, and ed education. So all three of those things are our priorities. And in, currently for Australia and advocacy, the Cedia organization here in Australia is working with the government to try and get this industry established as an, an official occupation, equal to the designers and, and builders and architects. And it should be. We are a professional organization and the country should recognize that. And we connect people through in-person events like this Tech Summit, an oncoming, upcoming forum, an online forum where people can connect across the world. And we're educating folks through certification and training just to make sure that professionalism is at the highest level for this industry. How does Cedia collaborate with other organizations and industry partners to advance its goals? Well, one of the main ways that Cedia can help uh, the consumer and the end user is by partnering with design associations, uh, building associations, architects, to make sure that that technology is integrated in a way that, that works for the consumer and that's integrated early enough so that they can be at the table in that early stage and make sure that technology meets the consumer's needs. So we're partnering with a lot of design associations and integrators have relationships with designers and architects to make sure that all of that is working seamlessly. The end use for the consumer is just a seamless, beautiful approach of technology. What are a couple of the main things that you would like to achieve over the next two to three years? Well, one of the main things Cedia is looking at doing is just establishing the name of Cedia as a more prominent, um, reliable authority in the marketplace. Now, the, I know the watchers, uh, the viewers of this channel are very familiar with Cedia, but many consumers don't know Cedia, and it should become the body of authority for anyone working in a smart home or anybody wanting a smart home. So one of the key initiatives is, is going to be that. The other is to, as I said, to establish this occupation as a profession, not just in Australia, but around the world, we're working on the same type of, type of issues. And of course, working with um, making sure designers 
and architects understand the importance of bringing the integrator in early in the process and uh, making sure that 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 end result for the consumer is is perfectly seamless. So those are some of the key initiatives happening at CDO. And the final question, how important is education and ongoing training to what CDO is trying to achieve? Well, CDO is the only worldwide body that really is designed to increase the professionalism and education of of this industry. So through our certifications, which are globally recognized now, we have uh, we have raised the bar really on what professionalism is. You know, 20, 30 years ago, it was the AV guy who was going to come in and hang a TV. Now it's a really professional, certified, educated, um, smart home professional who comes to the home, assesses the needs of the homeowner, and really can create a perfectly integrated and seamless technology in that home for the great end user experience. Next, I started to do the rounds of the convention hall, interviewing and chatting with the various manufacturers and distributors. I was struck right away how very different this event was to the consumer-driven CDA shows. Not even so much by the size of the event, but by how the focus is on getting new innovations and education to people who bring the products into the country, which is then fed down to us in the consumer space. It was an eye-opening experience for sure to see the other side of the industry. After a productive day of filming and talking, it was time to head to the Cedia Awards dinner. It was a mysterious journey in the dark and a little strange walking through SeaWorld at night and eventually all was revealed as we arrived at the games area which was all set up for a bit of fun playing games before heading in for the dinner. Of special interest was the global winner being announced as an Australian room, outdoing all of the international submissions. Wave Train took out the award with an incredible looking room, so congratulations to David and Scott on the win, and a little sneak peek, the next day I was approached to see if I was interested in filming the room in person as a room tour for my channel. So guys, let me know down below what you think in the comments section if you'd be interested in seeing a dedicated room tour of this room. So guys, make sure you stay tuned for more videos. I will be posting them over the next few days as I prepare to head to Melbourne for the StereoNet Hi-Fi show next week. And so I'm working really hard to get as much content out to you all over the next few days. If you enjoyed the video, why not give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think down below. But guys, that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now.